Okay, so I'm going to describe <coughs> how a shutter works during flash photography. And to understand this, most digital camera bodies uh, shoot at 200th of a second, right here. Uh, better camera bodies will shoot higher, uh, but most of them shoot at 200th of a second. Okay, so at one, <coughs> uh, at one second, the shutter opens and exposes the sensor, this is your film plane, and then it closes. And it has two parts. It has a part that comes down first, opens, exposes, and then closes. Okay, so let's speed this up a little bit. So now at 200th of a second, this is the fastest point where the shutter can open all the way, where it's fully exposed to the light. The flash pre-fires a little flash, then goes up right when the shutter opens, right here, as it's opening, it fires off and holds the duration while the shutter's opening, and then as the shutter's closing, it falls off. That's 200th of a second. Okay, so as the shutter starts firing faster, let's say you're doing it at 8,000, or actually 320th of a second, a lot of people wonder why they get a dark edge. That's because the way the shutter works is it opens part of the way and then moves across the film plane and then closes at 320th of a second. At 500th of a second, the shutter opens halfway and then moves across the film plane and then closes. You do this to restrict the amount of light coming in to control your shutter speed. So at 2,000th of a second, the shutter opens just a little bit, goes down the film plane at that height, and then closes. So you're really restricting light now. Now at 3,000th of a second, your shutter only opens a little bit and then stays open as it scrolls down at 3,000th of a second and then closes. So that little bit of light is only getting into the sensor. So this is why your sync speed is at 200th of a second because that's the last time that the shutter is open fully from edge to edge for the flash duration. Okay, so with this let's move on to high speed sync photography. Okay, so let's talk about today's digital camera uh, shutter speeds and sync speeds. Okay, so we have our shutter again and it's no different from how it was uh, years ago, but these are thinner and smaller. So they max out when fully exposed at 200th of a second. And that's typically where the sensor is fully exposed to the first wave of analog light, and there's a pre-flash, and then it goes up to where the shutter opens and then maintains this throughout the image and then falls off. Okay, so we already spoke about this. Now at uh, 500th of a second, that's cut in half because the shutter has to be smaller to reduce the amount of light coming in. So if you try to use a standard flash that fires once, it will only capture the first half of the frame. And then as the shutter is moving down, you'll have a shadow going across your image. Okay, so at a thousandth of a second, you have a very small gap. And as it comes down, you get a shadow at the very top of your image. Because that's the, well actually, you, the shadow happens here because this flash is now very late in the game. So only the bottom part of your image has light on it. So they created high speed sync. Okay, so high speed sync um, used to be the analog thing that we just told you about, but in the digital world, they now have digital flashes versus auto thurster flashes, which were one massive uh, um, capacitor to blow off. Now they have multiple capacitors. So what happens is you get this flash and you put it in high speed sync and when the flash goes off 
and it will go with the shutter speed. So if you're at 640th of the second on high speed sync, we know that that covers um, one third of the frame. So the flash itself will come up pre-flash right here and then before the shutter opens, okay so let's draw a timeline here before the shutter opens. So right at this point it will actually start to flash once here and then the shutter opens and the light will fall off and it will hit the second part here as the shutter comes halfway down the frame and then it will come up over here and carry that half down to the bottom edge which happens over here and then falls off. Okay so you know it has three hard blips this one actually just kind of falls off like that. Okay that's at 640th of a second. Now what happens at 2000th of a second is you have the same thing. The shutter is ready and then it pre-flashes as soon as it senses the button and then before you know it it goes up and starts firing again but this time it pulses even faster before it falls off and it pulses the first time at the very top right when it pre-opens and then it pulses again at the second stage and then again at the third and then again at the fourth and then again at the fifth as it falls off that gives you fully illuminated light as you go across the shutter but a flash that's at one to one over here one to one uh, sorry pretend that's a one one to one over here that's full power going in gets divided up uh, five times uh, up here it's three times but realistically the difference in light uh, because this is more of a continuous light it's actually brighter than one-fifth of a flash. It's more equivalent to say one-third of a flash um, because this is a continuous buzz but it happens so fast that it's able to hold it but with certain flashes they start really early and then hold it way past the shutter actually closes. So sometimes they can beep again out here and then hold it just to make sure that it got it within this range of the shutter actually being open as it comes down. So at eight thousandth of a second this shutter could actually blip eight times. So it could happen you know just like this going off and then falling off with its pre-flash but now it's becoming really weak because it's being spread out eight times as it's moving down the actual image to ensure that you have even light going down the image. So that's how high speed sync works on today's photography. Now what I like to do is mix both analog, this line, and this. Because this with certain flashes will actually stay open. But uh, we're going to demonstrate that on the uh, i40 flash, the Nissan uh, i40 flash video. Um, because that one strobes just like we were saying. You know, at it's, its fastest speed, which is actually only 4,000th of a second, which means it's only strobing four times as it's going down the frame. Uh, its power is cut in half but because we have the flash aimed in another direction into analog flashes those are actually able to burst with a long strobe of light because they have traditional um, capacitors in there instead of this one that's split up uh, they can hold during the duration of the shot but it's not always consistent light so the new digital flashes are much more consistent but using an older style digital flash allows you to kind of break that barrier if you use them together. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so let's explain high speed sync. Actually, let's explain camera sync speeds. Sorry. 
Okay, so for uh, any shutter speed below 200th of a second for most digital cameras nowadays, 200th of a second is the speed, the fastest speed, where the shutter is fully exposed to one wavelength of light. Okay, so your first speed is first curtain sync. Now this happens right at uh, the point where the shutter opens. It exposes the light to your image through here. That's first curtain sync. This happens right here. Okay, so that is a standard flash. That's when it fills everything with light. Now this is pretty standard all the way down to a 20th of a second. <clears throat> now this is where TTL or slow speed sync comes in. Now everybody used slow speed sync before TTL. So with this being said, that happens in the dead center of the frame. Now this will happen below 20th of a second. So your shutter is all the way open and then you get some ambient light in and then the flash fires right here. And that's where you end up with your slow speed sync. Okay, now we have one last one. And this one actually happens about here on our timeline and this is below um, I would say this is most effective below an eighth of a second and this is rear curtain sync okay so rear curtain sync in our timeline the shutter opens and it's open for the eighth of a second so right at the last part of the two uh, portions of the second left, that's where the flash actually fires on your timeline to create low uh, rear sync. So what this does is this allows a lot of blurry ambient light in and then it freezes the motion of whatever that you're getting in your image and then allows some blurry light behind it. And it's also called dragging the shutter and it creates really great lighting effects. Um, but it only works below an eighth and it really works very well at somewhere around a quarter of a second or a second. And then there's high speed sync and we just covered that or we'll cover that in another video. So there you go, there's your uh, front curtain slow speed sync also known nowadays as TTL and rear curtain sync. And the difference between slow speed sync and TTL is TTL will allow you to regulate how many stops of light that you actually put in, usually around two stops. So you can make your flash two stops brighter than the actual value or you can make your flash react the opposite way, two stops darker. So meaning that even though the shutter speed's opening at this speed, it's going to record it slightly darker and then add your flash to it so it's very dimly lit. Uh, so it just adds a little bit of light to your subject and that works at all sync speeds, but it reacts like slow speed, slow speed sync did years ago before TTL. Okay, so there you go. There's your uh, first curtain, slow speed, TTL, and rear sync. So hopefully that makes sense.